Welcome to the third part of the Keyhole Software Tutorial on EXTJS Single Page Applications. In the previous tutorials, we've gone over the overall structure of our single page application, as well as a high-level overview of what our code looks like. In this tutorial, we'll go over how the grid, which is what you see in front of you, is actually coded in EXTJS. Now, as I mentioned before, my grid is a collection of columns, a collection of buttons, and also contains a collection of models, which EXTJS calls a store. What my controller should do is be able to create the store, which is, remember, my model piece, create the view, which is the V and the MVC, and bind the two together. It also does some additional things like listening for clicks on these buttons, and also just getting some of the overall structure set up. So if you look at that code now, it's encapsulated in my controller.js file. So starting from the top, the first thing that it does is extends ext's app controller. This provides it with a lot of inherent functionality that ext.js has given this particular class. All of your controllers, at their heart, should extend this controller class, just so it's very, very obvious to anyone that's reading it, hey, this is a controller. It's not a view, it's not a model, it's not anything else. The only thing this can do is really piece together views and models. Next, we'll see that it has the stores. Like I said before, a store is really a collection of models. And what my user store encapsulates is a collection of the user model. The next thing it does is specify all the views that it's going to use. In this case, this controller just has one view, which is the grid that we see on the screen. But if perhaps it wanted to mix in some additional views, possibly do some switching between them, we could do that. Um, the best recommendation I can give is that really one view should have one controller behind it. As long as you have that direct mapping between the two, it's going to be a lot easier to maintain that software because there's only one owner for that view. And conversely, there's only one owner for that controller. It only does one specific task. If you get your ext.js and really JavaScript trying to do too much, it's going to be a maintenance nightmare. Um, it's not one of those languages that's very strictly typed, so maintenance is always something that you need to consider when you're writing an ext.js app. The framework itself does allow you to do more, but there is some due diligence that you have to do to make sure that your application runs quickly and is maintainable. After it does the views, it then does requires. In this case, it's going to require the controller that's going to represent the pop-up window that came up, which we'll go into that into a later tutorial. The next thing it does is, as soon as the view is created, it creates references to different view components on there. So for instance, there's the edit, there's the add and the delete button. What this is going to allow me to do, and you can see down here, is when my controller is initialized, on click, I call this add method. And then when my edit button is clicked, I call the edit method. The init method of your controller is where you should do listening for things. It's where you should create your view, get all that done, and then add your listeners. Every subsequent function should really be some sort of listener callback that was originally defined in your init method. So also in my init method, like I said, is the creation of my view. The first thing I do is I load up my store. The second thing I do is load up my grid. I then create an instance of my grid and bind it with my store. This is because my controller is the one that's really responsible for putting together my views and my models. The init method is also a good place for this, but the framework is pretty flexible on which exact method does this. So, these are the rest of my methods. As you can see, they all do very specific tasks, and the task that they do is well correlated to the name of the method. So in this tutorial, we've gone over an introduction to what my grid controller looks like. Next, we'll go into the actual view and see why we view certain configurations over others and how you can use those configurations to create interfaces of your own.